Hi friends, welcome back to our channel and hope you're having a great day so far. We're back again with another episode to cover some fascinating updates and to start with, believe it or not, we have something regarding Starship today. So let's move on. SpaceX's Starship project is continuously being in the limelight in the last few years and almost years after the 2019 update, Musk is going to give an official update on Starship soon. So let's begin our discussion with the preparatory steps they're taking for this official update. Recently it's come out that Musk will give an official update on Starship on Thursday, the 10th of February at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. After 2019, this will be the first update on the spacecraft in the beginning of this year, hinting more exclusive events upcoming in the future. Mr. Musk was asked about the future of Starship by a SpaceX fan. Musk replied, Starship is in a different league, orders of magnitude more mass to orbit than Falcon, necessary for creating a self-sustaining city on Mars. Starship aspires to be the first fully reusable orbital launch vehicle, the holy grail of rocketry. This is the critical breakthrough needed to make life multiplanetary. When the same follower inquired about Starship presentation, Musk stated, Thursday next week at 8 p.m. Texas time. SpaceX is expected to conduct a test that will see Starship go into orbit for the first time. Recent months have had a range of high-altitude tests, but attempts to conduct that major orbital test have been delayed, in part because of regulatory problems. Recently, SpaceX has once again installed their Super Heavy Booster 4 on Starbase's lone orbital launch mount for the third time hinting towards Musk's upcoming presentation. But it's quite striking to see that they followed the same old process of using cranes to lift the booster to the pad, while the Mechazilla Arms is almost ready beside. Possible chances were there, where SpaceX may not feel their robotic chopsticks are quite ready for the task. A few weeks ago, those arms have a good deal of workout with several hundred tons of industrial water bags, which simulated the weight of starships and super-heavy boosters. And from sources, it seems that those tests were quite successfully carried out. But while installing Booster 4 on the orbital launch mount, why SpaceX chose Crane to lift and install the booster, that's still a question. At present, Starbase does not have any crane large enough to lift and install Ship 20 onto Booster 4. This obviously hints that SpaceX may be planning to use the Mechazilla arm system for that work, but that may also evoke a question of how can SpaceX go for lifting a 100-plus tons of Starship about 100 meters above the ground to install it on top of the Super Heavy booster while they're not feeling the Mechazilla arms to be ready to lift a 200-plus tons of Super Heavy booster just to top the orbital launch mount? According to some sources, it may be due to some issue with the booster which made SpaceX to follow that path. It's expected that SpaceX teams may move for first full-range test of Ship 20. SpaceX will first move for Ship 20 stacking, and then on the 10th of February, Musk's presentation will come. By the time the fully stacked Starship will create the environment for upcoming presentation and also the orbital flight test. In the present context, satellite constellations in space are continuously increasing. Researchers are warning that internet beaming mega constellations, such as SpaceX Starlink, may affect the working of the radio telescopes. So, let's take a look at what sorts of problems mega constellations are going to create. Radio astronomy observatories are dedicated to searching for life in space. They use large arrays of antennas to detect feeble radio signals produced by stars, galaxies, and planets all over the universe. These radio signals often travel on the same wavelengths that people use for cellular connectivity, terrestrial radio and TV transmissions, and also wireless internet. Thus, there are always chances for those feeble signals to get deterred by these. Therefore, radio observatories always have to be placed on the most remote locations on Earth to install their sensitive equipment 
so that their detections do not get disturbed. Following the regular norm, the world's largest radio astronomy observatory, which is the Square Kilometer Array Observatory SKAO, is situated in a remote region of South Africa. This observatory is presently under development. With completion, they'll have two arrays spreading over lightly inhabited areas in South Africa and Western Australia too. The places where this type of observatory resides are protected as radio quiet zones, depicting that no cell phones, terrestrial radio or TV can be used in the vicinity. But still, after keeping inside radio quiet zones, they face problems in space observations from the huge constellations of satellites. For satellites, there is no barrier of remote regions as they can freely roam in space, beaming down signals anywhere on Earth, which aggravates the problem. Frederico de Bruno, radio spectrum manager at SKAO, stated that these huge constellations will affect the search of life in faraway planets, exoplanets, and also in detailed observation of other galaxies. What creates the problem is the band of wavelengths which these internet beaming satellites use. SpaceX's Starlink, being the largest operational constellation of internet satellites, is seen as a major problem in astronomical observations. The Starlink satellites work on a band of between 10.7 and 12.7 GHz for beaming down internet signals to user terminals. This same wavelength also provides answers for many astronomical questions, which creates the problem. DeVruno clarified that SKAO uses those protected radio frequency bands for observations which no one else can use, yet many astronomical objects produce signals in bands that are also used by humans in daily life. For this reason, they move to remote and protected locations, but the satellites are disturbing the plan by using the same band. DeVruno said, this band covers certain types of observations, including when we are looking for certain molecules in space that are the precursors of life. Also, the search for and study of exoplanets is done in this band. The radio signals coming from some of the most distant galaxies can also get redshifted into this band. So, the mega constellation interference will affect our ability to see back in time and study certain epochs. According to a study by the Zwicky Transient Facility, their observation of asteroids coming from the direction of the Sun will be hampered by the growing Starlink constellation. These asteroids can be easily spotted during sunset or sunrise, but the most visible Starlink satellites make the observation deceiving. Another telescope named Vera Rubin Observatory is under development in Chile. According to astronomers who were working for this observatory, estimated that when all of SpaceX's 42,000 Starlink satellites are deployed, then almost one-third of the total images captured by the telescope would have streaks of at least one Starlink satellite. SpaceX's growing Starlink constellation, as well as other larger Internet satellite constellations, is posing great threat to these astronomical observations. Already, SpaceX has deployed 2,000 Starlink satellites, and by the time SKAO will start working fully, in other words, about 2025, the number will increase to a very large extent creating further problems in space studies. DeVruno stated, We have looked at the effects for single-dish antennas and we found that they will need 30% more time to reach the same sensitivity. But it also depends on how many satellites are up there, and that changes every day. The more satellites, the harder it will be to do observations in those frequency ranges. We are trying to have conversations with mega-constellation operators to argue that if there will not be receivers near the radio telescopes, that perhaps they could do something not to point those beams directly at us. There will be no one to receive the signal anyway. DeVruno also pointed towards some remedial steps. He said, There are many things that can be done, but they always come at some cost. We already plan to schedule observations to avoid pointing where the satellites are, but that's changing a lot and is getting more difficult. We also plan to post-process our data and mask out the radio frequency interference, but that also means losing data. Despite these worrying situations, we can hope that astronomers, SpaceX, and other mega-constellation operators will find a way to solve this problem. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting.
and kindly provide your valuable feedback in the comment section. This will help us to improve.